Hello, hello. Welcome to my channel. I'm Angela and in today's video, I'm going to talk about my new job. Recently, I quit investment banking and I made a video on it explaining the reasons why and if you want to check it out, I'll link it down in the description box below. I won't go into those reasons in this video. However, a lot of you guys have been asking me where I'm going next. So to start it off, here is a little bit about my backstory, especially for those of you who are in you. I worked in investment banking in New York City at UBS. I've never said the name on my channel before. This is the first time and that's mainly because I didn't want work and YouTube connected to one another. I am aware that it's on my LinkedIn and you guys are free to go search up my LinkedIn or do whatever you want there. But I didn't want the actual name to be on my YouTube while I was working there. Now that I quit though, I am going to freely just say the name here on my YouTube channel. What did I quit investment banking for? I quit investment banking to join a corporate development team at a tech firm. Now, similar to what I did when I was in investment banking, I'm going to leave the specifics of this firm out of it. This firm has an office in New York City and I will be working out of the New York City office. Some of my motivations around quitting investment banking to join the corporate side are a culmination of factors. One being that I wasn't fully enjoying the work that I was doing in investment banking, nor did I love the industry that I was in. Sure, it was fine for those first two years in terms of building up experience and meeting a lot of great people, but I was seeking something that had a little bit of a better work-life balance as well as work that I personally found more meaningful. I wanted to go into this role because it involved a lot more strategic thinking and being able to understand how a business works operationally rather than just a lot of number crunching that was in investment banking. Corporate development is essentially like an internal investment banking team of a company. For example, when a company decides to acquire another company or they decide to go public or they decide to do a joint venture, these moves are all decided and done by the corporate development team within that specific company. As a whole, the job is very much related to what I was doing in investment banking. It's kind of just not working at a bank anymore, but doing this solely for one corporation. Work-life balance. Between the two jobs, just purely speaking based on number of hours work per week, in investment banking, I would generally work somewhere around 70 to 90 hours, whereas corporate development is usually more around 40 to 60 hours per week. However, apart from just the pure number of hours, I think one aspect that is really overlooked is predictability and control over your schedule. I've talked about this a lot in my videos, and this was a really big part of me leaving investment banking. You're expected to freely give up your evenings and weekends with no really prior notice. There was basically almost zero flexibility and that was something that would always keep me on edge. However, for the team that I've joined so far, I do find that there is a little bit more control over my schedule and what I do with my time. Rather than not knowing when I'll end every day, I have a little bit more predictability that usually by around 7 or 8 p.m. things will be pretty quiet. And so that allows me the chance to be able to focus on other things in my life like YouTube. Second salary. So making the switch to corporate development, your base salary will be comparable to investment banking and sometimes even higher depending on the level that you're at. The main differentiator comes in the form of the bonus. In investment banking, your bonus is oftentimes 100% or more of your base salary, whereas in corporate development, your bonus is generally below the 50% mark of your base salary. Of course, there are exceptions and it depends on the level that you're on. However, to me, this trade-off seemed worthwhile. If you divide by purely the number of hours that you're working, 
you'll find that you will get similar amounts of money in both. The incremental amount that is paid to investment bankers through bonuses is made up for by the additional hours worked. To me, I wasn't willing to give up those extra hours of my everyday for the added pay of the bonus. Of course, the sacrifice and trade-off varies from person to person. It really depends how much you enjoy the job that you're doing, how much you value the money that you're making versus your free time. And it depends on each specific situation. But for me personally, I really wanted to do other stuff aside from just my regular day-to-day -day corporate job. And my regular day-to-day -day corporate job was really taking up a very large portion of my life. In terms of the work that you're doing in corporate development versus in investment banking, the work is similar. It is a good amount of valuation work, Excel, PowerPoint, you're essentially using the same tools as you would in investment banking. It's a slightly different angle, of course, because now you are the client. However, one main difference that I've noticed is that while you're working in corporate development, you're a lot closer to the heart of the action. In investment banking, you're generally working on multiple clients at once. And I can just honestly tell you, at least from a junior perspective, you really don't know much about these companies. You don't know much about what their strategy is and how well they're run or how well they're doing or even much about their business model. And that's because investment bankers have such an influx of clients, projects that they're working on, that there's little time to actually understand the industry and understand these businesses besides high level, just number crunching and churning out pages. Corporate development, since you're actually working within the company, you have a lot of exposure to the CEO and CFO because a lot of what you're doing is for the strategy of the company. You're thinking about how to grow this company in terms of mergers and acquisitions and joint ventures and going public. And so you're right there with the CEO and CFO in terms of thinking about the strategic direction of this company. And that's something that I really enjoy. Working in investment banking, you don't get access to this type of C-level engagement on a junior level. It's much later in your investment banking career that you actually begin to be client facing and talk to CEOs and CFOs. Whereas in corporate development, you get this exposure from a very young age when you're a junior. Another thing that was really important to me was the sector that I was in. At UBS, I worked within the industrials team, and this meant that I was working with companies in power and energy, in chemicals, in airlines, in paper packaging, in auto, and more. While I did find a few select of these sub-verticals interesting, for the majority of companies that I was working on, I really didn't have much interest in them. Being at a tech company, it's exposed me to a lot of what's going on in the tech world that I really had no idea about being in investment banking. I didn't really realize that the sector that you're in mattered because prior to investment banking, people used to tell me that no matter what, you're doing work. It doesn't matter the companies that you're working with, but I found that it does matter. It helps a lot if you have an actual interest in the industry of the company you're working for or the industry group in investment banking that you're in. You're working on it every day, so you should join something that excites you. As of right now, I don't see myself going back into investment banking in the near future, but I know that it's always there for if I do. I personally think that being on the other side of the fence really gives me a more well-rounded skill set and ability to understand how companies think, how they work, and what makes them successful. Beyond that, I'm also really excited for what's to come. I have a lot of exciting video ideas for this YouTube channel and I really want to grow it more. And another super exciting thing is that I am starting a Patreon. For those of you who are interested, I'll include the link to my Patreon down in the description box below. If you decide to participate, I wanted to thank you guys for your support with some really cool perks on my Patreon channel. I wanted to find a way where I could form more personal connections with you guys and I am of course open to ideas so let me know if you guys have any ideas for other things that I can provide to you guys on my Patreon that you would find helpful. For now on my Patreon, I am doing questions and answers from investment banking interviews that I have done myself. 
as well as exclusive content like my resume and cover letter that got me into investment banking and more videos like those. I am also planning to do live streams and group chats with you guys to create much more of a community as well as do one-on-one -on -one mentorship sections where we can talk about how to customize your plan for getting to wherever you want to go. I am happy to do mock interviews, do resume reviews, etc. however you need my help. And in general, I just want to thank you guys for all your support, whether it's hopping on my Patreon or watching all of my videos. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Please remember to give this video a thumbs up. It always helps a bunch and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and hit that bell to turn on notifications so you know whenever I post a new video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!